Welcome viewers, I'm Mamta. Today we'll be doing chapter 3 of class 11th, which is the basis of human behavior. Continuing the chapter, we are doing the last part of the chapter today, dealing with the cultural basis of behavior. Now, till now we were talking about how biology influences our behavior. Now we are trying to understand the man-made part of the environment, the culture. Now, every biological behavior also is governed by the culture and cultural behavior governs the biology as well. Now, because human behavior is very complex, so obviously not just biology but culture both influences human behavior. So a simple thing like what we eat. Earlier it was not pizzas and burgers, now it is that. So everything changes with time. Now the cultures are changing very, very fast. We are trying to adopt the values of the Western culture and Westerners are trying to adopt the values of the Indian culture of spirituality. It can be a simple aspect like a way of life, a lifestyle, a language, a way of thinking, our values. All these are a part of the culture. So right from what we eat, the way we dress, and to the way we think, our ideas. There was no concept of computers, laptops, or netbooks 50 years back. There was not even a concept of internet 50 years back. Now the networking has got so fast, and the space is constricted. The whole world is one. That is because of the cultural change. The concept of Eskimos, the way they build their houses, very different from the way we build our houses or the deserts area, the way they live in their life. So that's the concept of culture. Now, there are certain cultural tools that we talk about. So let's say talking about the concept of an iPad or an iPhone, that's a cultural tool, which our grandparents may not be able to understand because it's a very different tool for them, something that they have not been able to relate to, which was not there in their time. So that's one aspect. It could be the way we eat. Some people eat with their hands. That's their culture. Some people eat vegetarian or eat egg or non-vegetarian. That's again a part of their culture. What is acceptable in their society? Now, the cultural concept also comprises of three major aspects. One is known as enculturation. The other is known as socialization. And the third is known as acculturation. These are the three aspects that we are going to cover in the concept of culture influence because all this is a part of cultural transmission you know like we have the genes which are transmitting the biological information we have a concept known as the memes which are transmitting the genetic information or the cultural information so one is the genes for biological one is the memes for the cultural so this transmission also is very important like biological one biological one like we talk about the genetic preparedness the psychologist Keller talked about the genetic preparedness concept that are the genes interacting with the learning environment, are the genes interacting with the way we are dealing with outside. So biological transmission can be the same for everyone, but the cultural transmission is outside. So this kind of a learning that happens or the changes that happens, the evolution which is psychological, that is basically two kinds of dual inheritance, the genetic one and the environmental one. We call it the dual inheritance, which comprises of two processes. Top-down processing, which is from the parents to the child, that is where they learn their culture. Parents are teaching deliberately to the child the way they have to behave in their setting, what is acceptable, what is not. Similar to that is the bottom-up, which is a child is teaching and the parent is learning from the child. That is the bottom-up level of inheritance and the learning outside. Now, we also have in culture concept, a lot of transmissions are happening, which is very, very deliberate. And at the same time, you know, it could be a simple thing like a schooling. Schooling is changing from the time there was a gurukul set up. Then there was a time where children were having a lot of value system, value-based education. And from the time now where the children are very, very techno-savvy, and everything is happening at such a fast pace. Even the changes are happening in such a fast pace. So a class 12th child feels a generation gap with the child of, let's say, class 6th or 5th. So that is how things are changing so fast. This kind of a transmission basically is dependent on the tools outside. So it could be a simple thing like languages. It could be a simple thing like the way we think, the way we handle ourselves with the products and the tools which are available outside. So thinking, ideas, mindset, 
our behavior, our language, our way of eating, our way of thinking, all of that is also changing. So, coming to the concept of cultural transmission, the first and the most important concept known as enculturation. Enculturation means there is no direct deliberate teaching happening. We are just observing and we are learning. So, let's say a person entering a temple and removes the slippers outside, bends and bows and takes the blessings. The child also observes that and does that. A concept of cooking. A child observes the parent doing it and also learns and imbibes it. A concept which is there, we are not labeling it, we are not creating it, that norm is already there. We are just imbibing it in us and following it without even realizing it. It's so automatic learning, such a quick learning. So a concept of a vegetable or the concept of a cereal is something that we imbibe because it is already existing. We just observe and follow it in our behavior. That is the concept which is so agreed upon by everybody and everybody is following it. So we also tend to automatically follow it without thinking about it. Second important concept in this is known as socialization. Now socialization is a concept which is again interdisciplinary and it's a very very general concept which talks about how we are born and brought up. So a family which is completely copying let's say a culture based on a spiritual aspect is socializing its people, its children into imbibing those elements and becoming like that. So that is the aspect of socialization, the way we deal with others. It's basically we have parents in our head. The way they behave, we are behaving like that without even realizing it. That is socialization. So if a child says that my father is not at home, that means he has been socialized into dishonesty. Now obviously at times we have to lie about things, but then children pick up very fast. Children learn from all these things. It's like they start feeling that, you know, this is the acceptable way of behaving and they start doing that without knowing it. So socialization can also be the skills and the qualities, the internal and the external dispositions, which the child is automatically and unknowingly imbibing and following later. So the way a child is groomed, parenting comes into it. The way a child is taught, knowingly or unknowingly how to handle people and situations is known as socialization. Now there are four major agents of socialization. That means parents are not the only ones who socialize. Of course they are the most important ones. So parents are socializing the child one, then we have the role of the friends, the peer group, then we have the mass media and of course we have the most important one as a school also which is a major socializing agent. So parents you know, parents work at a lot of levels knowingly or unknowingly. It could also be the grandparents in the family who are teaching children to behave in certain ways. That is socialization by the grandparents. Now, parents are rewarding the child. If the child does something good according to their standards, the child learns that, yeah, this is the way to behave. And because my parents are approving of it, if they are punished, the child thinks, no, I've not done it right, so let me mend my ways, let me modify the way I am behaving, even if it is to please the parents, but this is the style by which they learn it. And also, there are three major kinds of parenting. First is authoritarian. Authoritarian parenting is a very good style of parenting because it is dealing with, you know, trying to have a logic, trying to have a discussion, trying to give a choice to the child, where the child takes the initiative and he makes his own decision, but of course with the supervision of the parent. The authoritative parenting is basically dealing with the parenting where the parent is very strict, very forceful, a lot of command. The degree of control is very, very high. The degree of acceptance is very, very low. Not a very good style of parenting. Because here the child gets low on the self-confidence, doesn't have faith in his own abilities. Third kind of parenting is the permissive style. Now this style is also known as the democratic style uh, or the laser sphere style. Now this style is a confused style where the parent is sometimes strict and other times is giving cues and signals of being too lenient. So they allow the child at times, most of the times, to take their own decisions and do their own things. And you know, this is where there's no supervision, no control at all. The child does what he feels like. So it's more like a spoiled child because he doesn't know what is right and wrong. No direction, no guidance, no communication, no emotions. These are the three major parenting styles. Second major agent of socialization that we have is the friend circle, the peer group. 
Now the friend circle are basically trying to, you know, develop a lot of qualities in the child, a lot of traits in the child, sharing or let's say responsibility or different kind of roles. The child is looking at the peer, their acceptance is very important, imbibing a lot of things in his behavior, developing an identity because of the friends. So a lot of times for the child, the family takes a back seat, particularly in adolescence, and the friends are very, very important. And the children, in fact, learn from their friends. A child who's sitting isolated will not be able to develop socially or emotionally because he is not interacting. Interaction teaches the child a lot on its own. So a child who goes out to play with different people is learning and imbibing a lot. Different kind of games that they develop, different kind of conversation that we have, discussion that they have, really develops them and prepares them to face and deal with life's challenges. That's about the peer group or the friend circle. Third, we have the school as a very important agent of socialization. Now school, think about a time, why do we go to school? What is the reason for going to school? The most important aspect is, of course, studying, which develops our cognitive functions. It develops our alertness. It gives in us a structure and a discipline way, a routine way of living. It teaches us a lot of values. It satisfies our curiosities for knowledge. It also makes us very, very creative. That's major grooming which happens. It lays the foundation for the rest of the life. So before a child crosses 12th and moves on into college life and into the real world, the school is what is preparing the child to face the challenges which are laying ahead. So that's the major ro role of a school where the child is prepared to try out a lot of things, develops that confidence, has faith in himself and develops his various talents along with the academic excellence. That's about the school. Last agent that we have is the mass media. Now, very, very important because a lot of children, let's say parents, when they are busy and they leave the newborn child to TV as a distractor because the child is disturbing them from their work, at that time, the child gets addicted to TV. And from TV, he picks on a lot of aspects like violence, abusing, or a lot of negative qualities because the child is watching things which is not meant for his age. And the child is imbibing them as a right way of behaving because whatever you observe, you understand that this is the way to behave and unknowingly you copy that behavior because you see those consequences and you're tempted to copy it without even knowing it. That's where TV, in fact, it's also proven by research that when we watch a lot of TV, it tires our brain and we ultimately are not able to do our work with full concentration. It's a sedentary activity. We are just sitting and watching something. Our brain is not relaxing, but rather tiring itself. And we're not doing anything creative or learning anything. That's why it is not a very good agent of socialization. Of course, we can use it for the positive because it is an infotainment. Information and entertainment depends on how we are processing information. Are we aware of it? Last aspect of culture that we talk about is acculturation. Acculturation is basically dealing with direct and deliberate teaching, which is resulting in a lot of psychological changes. And uh, in fact, cultural and psychological changes result from it. We have four various forms by which acculturation happens. Voluntary, suppose a person moves out for a job, it's voluntary. Involuntary, there's a political uh, you know, uh, intervention that's an involuntary one, not your control. Direct, you go and settle at a new place. Indirect is through the media. Now, here we talk about two concepts. Acculturation taking place at a subjective level. And acculturation is a kind of a re-socialization. It's a kind of a relearning. You're know, learning new values, new changes. It can happen at the subjective level, which is known as a culturation attitude. You don't even know and you're suddenly imbibing those attitudes because you see it outside. And second is at the objective level, which is very important. And at the objective level, we talk about the four strategies we call as a culturation strategies. Now, these strategies are marginalization, where a person goes and travels to a new place, is not really connected, indifferent to both the cultures, his culture and other culture. We also have integration, where the person is trying to integrate himself into the other culture as well as follow his own. Separation, where he only follows his own culture. And assimilation, he only follows the outside culture. These are the four major strategies. To summarize, we understood today the concept of culture, its transmission through the three major processes, namely enculturation, socialization, and acculturation. That's all for today. Thank you. Thank you.